Listen to the words of the soul. Everything. Gonna be alright. Everything is gonna be. Greetings and welcome to a sip of inspiration. This is Stephanie Wilson Coleman, and I'm your host of tonight's show. I want to thank you all for tuning in to tonight's show where we're going to talk about tapping into your greatness, part two. Now in part one, for those of you who watched last month, we talked about a simple formula. Thoughts plus feelings plus action equals manifestation. Now I know that a lot of you have heard that all it takes is thoughts and feelings, but I'm here to tell you that if you don't move it into action, nothing happens. We also talked about what's keeping you in place what's keeping you where you are and otherwise what is the reason for your failure to launch we talked about fear we talked about relationships and picking the right relationships we talked about allowing yourselves to dream and we're going to finish that conversation today because it's such an exciting topic we ran out of time <laughs> joining me are three of my favorite people again and i want to thank them for taking time out of their busy schedule come on we're going to start on the end and i'm going to introduce you again or should i say reintroduce you to reverend Wendell tate Pleasure to be here, Stephanie. Fantastic. Tell the audience a little bit about you, because it's been a minute since you've been on the show with yes, us. Yes, it has. I've, I've moved with my spiritual center at church. We're now at 1335 um, East Sibley Boulevard in Dalton, mm -hmm. and we meet there at the Best Motel and Suites every Sunday from 10 to 1130, having a marvelous time with the little simple word, rise, uh, recognizing the infinite spirit in everyone, which is the spirit of greatness. So we invite everyone to come and join us there, and I'm happy to be here to share some things. Thank you. Okay. And new to my little circle of friends is Nina Christmas. Now, she's got an interesting story. She is a hair designer and a psychologist. How about that? <laughs> Tell us a little bit about you. Well, you know what? I started off as a business major in college. Before that, I was licensed as a cosmetologist. And growing into my business circle, I found that psychology fit a little better for me. Mm. Some nudging pushed me into that direction. So I used that to enhance cosmetology education. And it all works out for conversation. Ah, oh, fantastic. And the next one is Stanley Robinson. Stanley has introduced me to some of the most interesting books I've ever read in my whole life. We have just an absolute ball together. He alone is going to get everybody back in America reading. I'm going to help all I can, too. So Stanley is the producer of The Ink Spot, which is both on television and on the radio. Hi, Stanley. Hello. Thank you for having me. Stanley's <laughs> like my resident smart person, too, right? <laughs> good, I did good. this the last time, and I probably embarrassed him, but <laughs> he actually has, is a, has a JD and a DBA, which is a Doctor's in Business Administration. I am just so excited to know you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Thank you. So I've assembled a few people here so we could finish talking about tapping into your greatness. Now, this is a subject I said finish, but I want you to know at home that you're always going to be tapping into your greatness. Mm -hmm. That's a process that is never finished. So I want you to enjoy the journey. Because what your greatness may be today, I promise you that once you step into that, mm. other things will nod you and push you along and you'll find something else to fall in love with. So mm. what are some of the barriers that we talked about for uh, stepping into your greatness? And if you guys are anything like me, you probably experienced some of those barriers yourself yeah. since the last yeah. show. Yeah. <laughs> because there's always something. There's always something to learn about yourself. There's always something to overcome. Well, I think last time we, t we said that one of the barriers were toxic people in mm -hmm. your life. Mm -hmm. uh, those are people that will be negative, people that will say you cannot do it and you know, whenever you come up with an idea. I think this may be part of human nature. I'm not 100 percent sure mm -hmm. but it seems that when you come up with an idea people will, the first thought all the time it seems is that people will have a tendency to be negative on mm -hmm. that and say you mm -hmm. cannot do that and they'll come up with good reasons as to why you, you can't do it. Now, when they come up with these good reasons, and you're right, they do come up with really good reasons, what do you do with that? How do you, how do you process that information? Yeah, well, what I do, if people come up with good reasons, I, I try to listen, and I think that's really in terms of being um, successful, mm -hmm. you know, living mm -hmm. your greatness. One of the things that we have to do, that we must do, is listen. Mm -hmm. 
And I think that's what, mm -hmm. if we listen a little bit more, I think we're going to do a lot better in life. Uh, so what I like to do is if people are talking to me and, and let's say the person is negative, then I will listen to the person. Uh, however, I won't necessarily react to what the person said. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that when people talk, what we need to do is everything that somebody says to us is valid. Now, it's what you do with that information that's going to make the difference. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you kind of filter it out. Some things you take, you act on, and some things you don't. Whenever I get the negative negativity, I just kind of blow it off. I, I'll say, yeah, okay, thank you for that, and keep going. Now, yeah. I, I read a quote by Winston Churchill that said that everyone's opinion deserves at least some respect mm -hmm. because they put as much work and thought into formulating their opinion as you did into your opinion. Doesn't necessarily mean that you have to act on it, but at least have some respect for it. And I find that, we'll call those devil, devil advocates. I find that mm -hmm. they have a very useful role, as Stanley said. Sometimes they point out uh, pitfalls that you didn't think about. Sure mm -hmm. do. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes yeah, they, they help you sharpen your plan. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes they just get you going. They just kick you off of your seat so you <laughs> yeah. can get and, that and, that, and that's a good point, because for me, one of the things that really do get me going mm -hmm. is negativity. Mm -hmm. When somebody mm -hmm. tells me I cannot do something, that's when I'm going to go do everything within my humanly power to make that thing happen. I so, think that's, are you a Leo by chance? No. Okay. <laughs> hey, that's that Stand fire. Leo, huh? Winston Churchill, however, is a Sagittarius like myself. You know, I, I, I try to bring in and I value everything that everyone has to say, but I also recognize those small foxes. Okay. Are at the bottom of those grapevines yeah, yeah, trying to true. bring you all the way down. Yeah. I found the need to kind of put some of those toxic people on mute. Okay. But not necessarily kick them out of my life plan because, like you say, they can't sharpen you. Yeah. You know? They can be highly motivational. To, to me, I, I love them because it's a two, two step thing. You hear them, you must listen because listening to me is respect for another human being. Mm -hmm. But after you listen to them, or while you're listening to them, you must develop the ability to cipher, that's all, to just decide right. mm -hmm. what's important, what's not important, and they don't know that. They don't know what's going on in your head. That's an inside <laughs> job. That's okay. what you do for yourself while constantly respecting them. Because half of what I hear from some people, I, I simply uh, zap it out while I'm listening, and at the same time say two little words, I understand. And I do, from my own perspective, okay. you know. So I'm being true to them and true to me. I keep what is useful. I let go what is not. Right. But now, toxic means that they're always <laughs> negative, okay? We're not talking about the occasional you negative You mean real person. poisonous we folks. We mean poisonous people, right? <laughs> now, and we are not uh, saying for those people who are listening that people are bad. What no, we're saying no. is that sometimes we develop habits yes, we do. and beliefs that will cause us to do things that are poisonous. Yeah, okay? yeah. So what do you do about those poisonous people? How do you get them out of the way? Well, one thing I found is that those who assume that you know, everything will tumble, everything might not work, I don't know if they've accepted the fact that the universe can work for you and that what <clears> you put <throat> out can work for you. Um, I've never done anything for myself. I recognize that I have some help from higher power. Absolutely. You know? There are some who don't know that and they think, oh, wow, all that you have, you did for yourself? No, I don't know where it came from. It's actually a blessing. You know, so they can't imagine how you came up with this because they don't know really how to pluck okay. it. And I think that's your whole point of having us here this evening. We got to help them figure out how to pluck yes, it out do. of the universe. Well, you know, when it comes to those toxic people, I think last time I mentioned this to you, in, in general, I think the word excuse is a bad word. Mm -hmm. However, in this instance, when you're talking about toxic people, what, one of the things that I do, and again, I mentioned this last mm -hmm. time, is I will make any excuse in the world to get away from those people. Uh, because, I mean, it is a yes, problem. It, right. It's a serious yeah. problem yeah, when you is. have that type of person in your life. And as you said, you're not talking about the person that's occasionally giving right. you an yeah. opinion that you may not agree with or even something that's negative or bad. We're talking about somebody that's bringing you down. Right. And when yeah. I have somebody in around me that's like that, I want to get away from that person as quickly as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to 
you know, gradually move away mm -hmm. from that individual, try to um, hang around and, and associate with that person as less as possible. Now, sometimes it, that may be a little tricky, especially if it's a family member exactly. or, or a close relationship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you're forced to be with them all the time. Well, that's so when you come up with problem. the excuse. 